Hi and welcome to Data Coder. In this video, I am going to discuss HTTM conversion process. The process of converting EDC data into HTTM data set. If this is your first time to the channel, then subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos on clinical SaaS programming. So let's get started. So let's see the process flow of converting EDC data into HTTM data set. So when a clinical trials begin, the first step is to design or develop the protocol. So the protocol is the document which gives all the information about the trial, the information about study design, how many subjects, the visit schedule, the dosing details, etc. So the protocol is the document which gives all the information about the trial. So once the protocol is designed, the next step is to design the CRF. So CRF is a document which gives all the information how the data should be collected in the trial or in each site how the data should be collected. CRF stands for case report form and it's designed based on a standard called CDAS. So based on CDAS, the CRF is designed and uh, based on the CRF, the database is going to be developed. So CRF is designed based on the standard called CDAS. So once CRF is developed, next step is the database will be designed, all the operational data model, what we called, and in this operational data model, the actual data will be entered from each site. So now, once we have the protocol, we have the CRF and we have the database, we have the, you know, input data. So our, uh, you know, task will, real task will start creating the HTTM data set. So before creating HTTM data set, we need to annotate the CRF. So CRF annotation is nothing but mapping the EDC variable into HTTM variable. So mapping the EDC data point into HTTM variable based on the HTTM implementation guide. So this annotated CRF is called ACRF. So once the annotated CRF is ready, we need to move to the next step, creating the HTTM mapping specification. So for each HTTM domain, we need to create the mapping specification. So once we have this annotated CRF and mapping specification ready, we can start developing the tabulation data set or HTTM data set. So this tabulation data set or HTTM data sets are developed uh, based on this HTTM standard and we have a document called HTTM implementation guide. So based on this HTTM implementation guide, this HTTM data set will be developed and it will be validated. So th there are different methods to validate this HTTM data set. One is double programming, another is, you know, after the double programming, we can do the pinnacle check. And these are the some of the example of HTTM data set like demographic, subject visit, subject element, adverse event, concomitant medication, laboratory, etc. So once we have this tabulation data set or HTTM data set is ready, we can move to the next step that is creating or developing the analysis data set or ADAM data set. So this, uh, you know, analysis data set or ADAM data sets are developed based on this ADAM standard. So we have a ADAM implementation guide and based on this ADAM implementation guide, we create this ADAM data set. So this ADAM data sets are created by considering the, our final result that is, you know, table listing or figures. So based on this table listing and figures requirement, this ADAM data sets are created. So some of the examples of this ADAM data sets are ADSL, ADA, ADCM, ADLB, etc. And once the ADAM data sets are ready, these also, these data set also get validated by double programming and pinnacle check. And after that, we create our final result that is the table listing and figures based on the study requirement. So this is the process of, you know, converting 
etc data into htm data set then creating analysis data set and creating tables listing and figures in a clinical trial so the next is uh, you know let's look into a case report form so this is how a case report form looks like so this is called a blank crf where you know it's mentioned how the data should be collected in the sites and this is called annotated case report form or acrf so here if you see there are two domain mapped demographic and vital signs so when in a part in a single crf we are mapping multiple domains so each domain should have different color coding so demographic and vital signs should have different color coding okay and all the dm variables if you see race sex birth dtc etc are there and vital signs we have vs test uh, is captured over here so this annotation means mapping this edc data point into sttm variables so next look into some of the definition so first is cdisk so cdisk stands for clinical data interchange standard consortium and cdisk is a global open multidisciplinary non-profit organization that has established standards to support the acquisition exchange submission and archive of clinical research data and metadata next is cedas cedas stands for clinical data acquisition standard harmonization and cedas establishes a standard way to collect data consistently across studies and sponsors so that the data collection formats and structures provides clear traceability of submission data into the sttm delivering more transparency to regulators and others who conduct data review next is sttm sttm stands for study data tabulation model and sttm defines a standard structure for study data tabulation data sets that are to be submitted as a part of a product application to a regulatory authority such as us fda so these are the some of the important uh, you know definition of <coughs> cdas cdas and sttm so that's all about this and thank you for watching this video subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos thank you and take care